Hi everyone, this is Heather with Keep It Simple Social Media. And right now it seems like the rage is for the real estate industry to be hosting virtual open houses. Um, due to the COVID-19 and the restrictions placed around uh, people and the fact that a lot of people don't want people in their home right now for whatever the reason being, some people have compromised immune systems, some people have their elderly parents that they're either visiting or living with them. But for whatever the reason is, we still have our listings because some people need to sell right now and want to move on with their life. And when we take a listing, we do have a fiduciary duty in place to market that property. And now the real estate boards have implemented a way for you to add a URL to your open house on the MLS, just like you used to do when you used to be actually in the open house hosting it and having people come through the door. So today we are doing something called virtual Facebook Live open houses. Some people are doing Instagram open houses. And as such, there's um, a lot of fear around putting one together. And that is in another video that I have uh, produced and done for you step by step. As well, Catherine and I now have a Facebook Live one hour webinar that walks you through exactly how to host a Facebook Live from your desktop computer or from your smartphone. But today's um, live video, this is a live video. I am shooting this video from my desktop computer. And this live video today is more going to be talking to you about you've decided to do a Facebook Live open house or perhaps it's not even an open house but you want to do a Facebook live because there's so many other things that we can be doing Facebook lives about besides just open houses but the idea is you've made a decision to do one and perhaps you've scheduled it and we'll talk about that in a second but also perhaps you have decided that you're doing one but you want to promote it in advance so you can get the most amount of people possible to come and see your virtual live open house. Just like you used to advertise it in the paper, you used to advertise it on your website, uh, on MLS, and on your social media. So it's basically exactly the same thing. Nothing has changed. There's just new, fancier options to help you get more visibility. And that's what it's all about. In fact, the reason you wanna be doing live video opposed to any other type of video is Facebook favors the live video, the live streaming. It is every social media platform is going to give you more bang for your buck when you go live, which means without spending any money, you possibly can get hundreds of people to watch your Facebook live, not only during the live, but after the live is over is when you're gonna get the most people that will come and watch your Facebook live. Uh, it's called the replay, and the replay is evergreen, which means it lives on, on your Facebook business page wall. So let's talk about some of the ways that you can promote your Facebook Live in order to get more people to watch. And I'm just gonna zip up my um, table here. Okay, so the very first thing that you want to do is you wanna create a post, a regular post on your Facebook business page wall. Now this post, you might wanna create it in canva.com for free, cause it's a beautiful photo design website and there's lots of free options in there. And when you create that open house post for your Facebook business page wall, you could also create it as an Instagram post as well. So you could uh, create two posts, one for Instagram, one for Facebook, what you want to do is you want to maybe use a picture of the home, whichever is the most fascinating um, component of that property. You could even use a couple of pictures. But the important thing is, is that you want to tell people what day you're hosting the live open house. You want to tell them at what time. And something that you want to remember is you want to make sure that you go live on that day and at that time. So you have that information. You also need to tell people where the property is. What's the address of the property? And don't forget the city because we're talking about Facebook. So we're actually talking about the World Wide Web. So create a really colorful, catchy post. Now the trick is not to put too much writing 
on the photo itself because there's a rule around Facebook called the 20% rule. And that means that Facebook doesn't want to see more than 20% writing on that photo. So if you were going to spend five or $10 and get that post in front of more eyeballs to tell more people about your virtual live open house, then the trick is not to have a whole lot of writing on the photo because then it's called what's known as heavy text on Facebook. So those are some key things to remember not only on uh, your Facebook Live post, but on any post that you put on Facebook. So now you have a post for your Facebook business page wall. You have a post for your uh, Instagram. Now, while you're on Canva.com, you could switch that exact photo to be an IG story, an Instagram story. So now you're creating a story and you might create a story with maybe five or six different pictures and run that over the next couple of days before your Facebook Live, getting people excited and teasing them about the open uh, live house that you're doing. You want to make sure that you're getting as much exposure ahead of time. So what does that mean? If you're gonna host the open house on, let's say, on the Saturday, then what you want to do is start promoting that on probably the Thursday. So your post goes up on Thursday. It's also out on Friday. Remember that it takes up to 24 hours for um, an ad to be accepted by Facebook. And especially right now during the COVID-19 crisis where all the people at Facebook are working from home. So it takes a little bit longer. So I would actually get all your creative and content together on the Wednesday have it go out first thing in the morning on the Thursday, let it sit on your Facebook business page wall or your Instagram for at least four, five hours to get some organic reach. And then what I would do is I would go ahead and I would then turn that post into a little five, $10 ad and target a specific area and demographic people interested in real estate, house hunting, things of that nature. And then that post will get in front of more eyeballs. So now you're promoting your virtual Facebook Live open house in advance. And this is how people can write down in their day timer that you're hosting an open house or they can do something, they could get a reminder. But the only way for them to get a reminder uh, right on the post itself is for you to actually use a third party tool. Now, such as myself, this is a Facebook producer live open house that I could have scheduled, which would create a reminder. I would be able to upload a photo um, and I could probably do this up to a week in advance. There's also tools that you can use, um, which are StreamYard is another one, uh, Zoom dot us and of course be live uh, tv.com those are all third party ways that you can create a facebook live post in advance um, and it will have a little reminder it would create the post for you on your facebook business page wall so those are really awesome tools now zoom you cannot go live on zoom uh, unless you have a paid account at about twenty dollars a month there is a free option to go live when you're utilizing be live TV and StreamYard also has a paid option and and BeLive also has a paid option and that's if you wanted to share your screen um, that is you would have to have a paid plan so you could use a third party up to a week in advance to create the post upload a picture on their platform and it would create a post for you on your Facebook business page wall and it would have the little reminder so if you've seen those things on other people's business pages that's how they're getting there. They're creating the post using a third party and they're doing it in advance of the open house. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to schedule your open house. It's a little bit more of an advanced tip, but you could typically just say to yourself and to your seller, let's host a virtual live open house on Facebook at the property on Saturday. And let's say we're gonna start it at 12 noon and it might go until 12.30. Your virtual open house does not have to last an hour or two hours, just like it used to when you were actually there hosting it. So the reason that you want to go for at least 15 minutes on a Facebook Live of any kind is because Facebook will start giving notifications in the newsfeed of the people that they think are relevant to whatever your post is about, the people that are following your business page. And that gives people an opportunity 
to know that you're live right now and come over to your business page to participate, to ask questions um, right on your business page uh, wall. And you don't have to worry about getting back and answering those questions right away. You can if you're comfortable doing that, but because when your Facebook Live is over, you will be able to then publish it onto your business page and then you can go in and you can answer all the questions. And once again, I really like to emphasize the fact that your Facebook Live is going to get more views after it is over. And it is at that time that I'm gonna to talk to you, not right now, but in a minute, about what to do once that is over. So in advance of the open house, we've talked about creating a post on your Facebook business page wall. Now, how about this? You could go ahead and click the three little dots in the top right hand corner of that post and get the drop down menu. And you could see where it says pin this post. And what does that mean? That means that it takes this post and it pins it to the very top of your newsfeed. So if you post anything else after this post, everything else goes underneath this post. So when you pin a post on your Facebook business page wall, it puts that post at the very top. So anyone that comes to your business page will see that post right there. Now, you have to remember to unpin that post. And I actually uh, like to tell people Try to remember to unpin that post just before you go live. Because here's the thing, when you send people to your Facebook business page, either because you've put the URL in the MLS for that specific day and time, or you've sent out an email, which we're gonna talk about as well, what happens is they come to your business page and they have to start scrolling through your business page to find your live, and the very first post they're going to see is the one that you pinned to the top. So it is advantageous for you to take that post that's pinned to the top and unpin it just before you go live. So you're inviting people through the URL of your business page. If you have scheduled your business page on a third party, either the live producer, you've used Zoom or Be Live TV, they're going to give you a URL and it is that URL that you paste into your MLS open house feed or that you can put into an email. Now the cool thing about putting an email out to people is we're really last minute people, right? So if you sent that email out about an hour before you go live on Facebook with the link to your Facebook business page or the live, then what happens is people being last minute will say, oh, I wanted to watch that live Facebook open. And they will come to the business page by clicking that link that you've supplied for them. And it would be a lot easier for them to find you going live. So I've talked about um, putting a post on your personal profile. We've talked about doing some Instagram stories with your live, upcoming live, and creating a post on Instagram. You can create a post on LinkedIn as well, and of course, Twitter. Um, all of the different social platforms are what you should be utilizing to get the biggest exposure for your open house. But there's one more way that I think would be a really good way for you to introduce and promote in advance that Facebook Live open house, and that is go onto your Facebook business page and go to your events and create an event around your Facebook virtual open house. So now you're really covering all the different ways that you could get that Facebook Live seen by the most amount of people. And the other really cool thing about it is Think about how your seller is going to feel about all the efforts and the work that you have put in so people could see their property. And it's all the little things that we do that start to add up over time. And this little trick, by the way, can all be put in your toolkit for your market evaluations. Because once you start doing lives and you understand the promotion of it and how to take that live and get the most out of it, then that is a phenomenal marketing tool that you can be using today. And you're actually a trailblazer because a lot of realtors are thinking about it. A lot of them are stumbling through it. A lot of realtors still don't know what they're doing because they're not asking for help. And so, we really don't know what we don't know. So if you can find someone to hold your hand and help you get the best 
virtual live open house you can, then you're only going to get better and better with time. Um, I also want to say it's really important that you double check your Wi-Fi. You need really strong Wi-Fi to be going live. So if you can use a Wi-Fi connection at the property, it's probably going to be better than your own Wi-Fi off your smartphone. As well, I see a lot of real estate agents trying to do a live outside of the property and then go inside the property. Well, I think that's a phenomenal uh, way to expose the property. Uh, it's not very good when it comes to your Wi-Fi. So you really have to check these things out in advance. Now, my other super tip for promoting your Facebook Live in advance is to shoot a little 55 second uh, video, a teaser video. The reason I said under one minute is so you can pop it onto Instagram as a post as well. So if you shoot a really little teaser like sit in one place on the property maybe you do that video outside like i was just talking about and you just tell me about the phenomenal listing that you have uh what's surrounded by it the schools the parks the transportation the shopping everything that a buyer wants to know about and then you say if you want to see inside this beautiful property join me on saturday at 12 noon as we go live on facebook i'm going to show you the gorgeous renovated kitchen the living room so you don't have to take people through the entire house but you've created this great little teaser you've got energy you're looking into the camera you're talking to me the buyer and you're inviting me to your virtual live Facebook open house and they're just all little tiny ways that you can promote this open before you actually do it giving it as much exposure as possible when you go live at that open house, don't sit around and wait for people to join you because people don't necessarily join you right away. And then you're wasting the people that are there's time or the people that come to your replay to watch it are sitting there going, well, when are they going to start the open house, <laughs> right? So start your live right away. I always wait about five seconds before I begin my lives just so the stream and everything is working. And I'm going to tell you the trick behind that because like I said before, once your live is over, you have the option to click end, right? That stops your live. When you click end, Facebook automatically says to you, do you wanna delete this or do you wanna publish it to your page? You didn't like your live open house, you, you could delete it right there, right? But don't, don't, because I said that you get the most views on that open house after it's over. So after it's over, this is the bomb. This is when the rubber hits the road, right? You publish it, you then sit down and you open up your desktop computer and you go to your Facebook business page and you edit that live video, that beautiful live video. And you can actually trim the beginning of that video off, just like I'm gonna do on this live video. Before I download it and put it onto my uh, website or upload it to YouTube, I'm gonna edit the beginning off of this video. Um, the next thing that you wanna do is give that video the proper title. Just in case you didn't give it the exact title that you wanted, you can change the title, you can add the description, you can add a link to your website to where that listing is and that link you want to see within the first three lines so people can see it they don't have to click see more and then you can add tags to that video so tags on Facebook are relevant search terms so if it's real estate real estate open house real estate investing uh, the city that you're in you can add the location and you could if it's not too long add captions to your video as well. But I think one of the biggest things that you wanna to remember to do when you're editing that video is you wanna click on the thumbnail and you wanna pick a frame. And usually once you click pick a frame, Facebook will, will pick a really flattering frame for you because otherwise, wow, you're probably gonna have your mouth wide open and your eyes crossed. Like Facebook freezes things and that's what is going to be going through all the news feeds of people after the video is over. So it's really important to remember, you need to edit that live video, give it a couple of minutes for Facebook to produce, but then pop open your desktop computer, your laptop, go to your Facebook business page and click on edit on that live video and pick your thumbnail, give it a title, 
uh, get your description, your call to action in place, your location, your tags, your captions if you want, and trim the beginning or the end of that video off. Then what I recommend to get the most out of that Facebook Live open house is pop open your smartphone, get it out, and go to your business page and have a look at how it looks to the consumer. Is it easy for them to read the text? Did the Wi-Fi work properly? Can the sound, how's the sound on that video? If you're really happy with it and you, I mean, don't pick on yourself. Don't be looking at yourself at how you look or how you sound. This is not about you. This is about the property. So if the property looks good and everything went on fairly well, then I would take maybe $20 and I would go into my Facebook ads manager and I would target a specific audience that I think is the buyer for this property. And then, you know, run an ad for a couple of days and then show your seller the numbers, the results, the views, the engagement, the reach, the clicks, the clicks to your website, to where your listing is. All of these little things are all going to help promote that property, make your seller happy, and maybe help you get an offer on the property. So I don't suggest you delete it after it's over. It doesn't matter how bad you think you were. It's not about you. It's about the property. Um, I always like to make sure that I look at everything on my smartphone as well as my desktop computer because most people are looking at real estate today from their smartphone, driving around, these are all just really nice little ways to promote your Facebook Live in advance. Don't forget that you can send an email to your database. You can tell people about your virtual open house. Don't be afraid to tell them it's your first one. People want to support you. But you can also share that promoting posts that you've done in advance on your personal profile. I recommend that you do your Facebook Lives on your business page, but you can share the promotion in advance on your personal profile, and you can share the live after it's over on your personal profile, but you cannot advertise if you go live on your personal profile. There's so many more bells and whistles, including editing that live video from your desktop computer when it's over. So these are all wonderful ways Ways to help you become more successful, give you more encouragement, build your confidence when you're going to go live on Facebook. I would really like to thank you for joining me. If you're watching the replay, don't hesitate to ask me any questions that you might have. I'm just going to pop over to my Facebook business page and just from my smartphone. So you can do that. If you're from your desktop computer, you can go on to your Facebook um, from your handheld just to see if anyone's asking you questions because sometimes you cannot see the questions when you're live on the Facebook Live producer. So those are just some little tips and tricks and lots of wonderful things. It is my personal opinion that if you're going to go live on your Facebook business page to compete with other people that are doing it right now, other realtors that are out there, that you show some initiative and you promote that Facebook Live in advance with all the different ways that I've just shared with you today. And then I also recommend that once that Facebook Live is over, you show your seller that you're going to get it in front of more eyeballs. You can see, I've been looking at a lot of realtors' Facebook Lives and they're getting hundreds of views. When was the last time you had 100 people through an open house? Definitely the world has changed and real estate the way we knew it has changed. And so it's up to you to sharpen your tools and become a very good technology real estate agent uh, today in order to help promote your business. My name is Heather and I look forward to helping you continue to do more Facebook Lives. Remember everyone, let's keep it simple.